Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be continuing work on our Boland's sleeve hitch project. In the last video on this project, uh, we cut a lot of rubbish off of this. And as you can see, there we have our pile of scrap and reusable materials, uh, which we will be using in the future. And it does look semi-similar to uh, what it should look like. Now, since the last video, we've done a bit more work cleaning the sleeve hitch up. Uh, we mounted it in the mill and used a mill cutter to get a nice uh, flat surface across here so that's all level and all of the rubbish that was welded on here is gone uh, we also used it to go around the inside to get the worst of the weld off of the inside of there and the same on the front what we discovered when we were doing this is this front part isn't actually straight it kind of bent with, bends inwards at the center uh, because you can see here that's flush and then in the center that's obviously got a step on it uh, same with this part which we've taken down because uh, that was sticking out before that's now a lot closer to the metal and we've also taken uh, the top off of here which you can now see the cracks and gaps there so hopefully we'll be able to push uh, this center part out with the part how it goes in in the middle we did actually check against our uh, good sleeve hitch and you can see on there it slightly bends inwards in the middle too so that might just be how Boland's made them but we have a few clips from us doing the mill work so here are those clips over by the bench now and we have the sleeve hitch clamped in the vise so that we can try and take out that centre part. Now I've got a mallet and a drift and we're going to see uh, how well this moves. If it does, ideally this will just come out from my, me hitting it. Oh, that's good. That was a bit too easy. Yeah. Simple. And it doesn't look like it's left too much damage to the hole. I'm quite surprised by how easy this came out. Uh, pretty much one hit and that was loose uh, when it came out of here. Uh, unfortunately, that has left a non-circular hole there. So there's going to be have, have to be some uh, repair jobs done there. Also, the outside of this needs more cleaning up too. And speaking of cleaning up, that is what we're going to get onto now. Got a range of tools here that we're going to be using. A grinding disc on the angle grinder, a cutting disc, and a number of files. Uh, just taking down all of these messy bits, like the two uh, weld spots at the back there and here. Uh, cleaning up the edges around this weld on the top, uh, cleaning up the front of it and then working out what we're going to do around this tube. Now we'll get some video for you. Obviously most of this is just uh, a lot of handiwork and uh, not fully sure how much we'll be able to show before it gets a bit repetitive, but we'll get you some clips of it.
of time later now and a lot of filing and angle grinding and as you can see this part now actually resembles a circle which is good and there's no weld stuck to the tube anymore that bit is uh, being back curved as usual now the top part we went over as well that got rid of the uneven parts and that now looks quite nice on the front we got rid of all of the remnants of the piece of box section that was on there and uh, tried to make this as flat as possible because there was a lot of dents on that then if we go towards the back uh, the part on this side and the other side you can barely even see that there was ever a weld on them so that's good however uh, we spotted something uh, rather unhelpful while we were doing this which is if I put the straight edge on here you can see uh, this pivots on here which means that this part is bent which this bit is bent outwards uh, which this isn't too bad but if we go to the end you can see there's quite a big gap there um, from here backwards where it's been bent outwards too and that isn't it this part going up appears to be bent at a slightly strange angle and if i take the pin off and this part off you can also see uh, that that th this pin is uh, bent backwards too so what we're going to try and do is get this uh, in the vise and try and straighten up a few of these things if that doesn't work then we'll have to find a way of somehow getting in the press. Now we don't have any video of bending it because it was slightly dodgy using our big 36 inch Kennedy pipe wrench uh, with device and uh, of also having a four foot bit of pipe going off of this for extra leverage, meaning that we had quite a lot of uh, bending force and everything is straightened up how we want it now and we have actually got the tractor here to test it against so if I just go like this you can see that is a nice fit on there and it'll be a bit of a tighter fit once we've painted it but it shouldn't scrape off all of the paint when we first fit it it's taken us a significant amount of time to do all of the grinding and stuff on this so we are rapidly running out of time. So the final job for today will be cleaning this up, getting all of the paint off it and the rust. And that will take us down to a nice, neat, even finish all around uh, the sleeve hitch. And we'll also expose what other grinding needs doing, if there's anything else that needs doing. Now, the tool we're going to be using for this is our grip blasting cabinet that we have here which featured in a number of videos uh, the first one was when we put this together a few years ago and then we've used it for some cleaning up jobs like when we were making our uh, ht snowplow replica and also when we were putting the uh, wheels on it which has been very helpful for dragging this out here to a helpful place in the workshop now i'll put this in here And we've got the compressor hooked up to it so that is all set pretty much and hook the door shut and we can get grip blasting come to get grip blasting quite finished the grip blasting now uh, but we've had a bit of a problem which is the fact that all of our media that we're using in the grip blaster which is glass has now turned to dust which makes it very difficult to see when you're doing the grip blasting and also makes it slow progress in uh, taking this down to bare metal now as you can see uh, we've done most of it but there's a couple of things that we've noticed while we're doing it you can see some strange markings along here 
uh, which we uh, didn't touch this bit when we were cleaning all off all of the weld that was on there. So that wasn't us that created that. And then if we look over here, you can see a lot of weld splatter on there, which I'm guessing is from when they actually originally welded this part on. So before we do any more, we'll probably have to grind all of this splatter off and uh, investigate uh, this, possibly try and flatten it out a bit more than it is. But obviously we need to order some new media for the grip blaster so that we can continue with this at a later date. Now there's a few other things that we'll have to do for this in the next time that we get some workshop time to look at this project. Uh, we've got a pin to make up. Uh, that angle will be fun to try and bend because that's quite a sharp angle for quite a thick bit uh, of pipe or tube even. Then we've got this plate here, which we need to make up. Again, I'm bending it, so that will be, that, or that has the possibility to be quite difficult. And then probably the most difficult bit of them all is uh, making up the lift lever, which obviously you've got to make up the bracket part, get the bends right in the rod, put this stopper on, and then drill the three holes in there. So that's quite a lot of work still, uh, left to do but we can't progress any more now without any uh, media for this and we have run out of time because of the amount of time that it takes to do all of this cleaning up work so that is it for this video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye